the Norwegian Nobel Committee has decided to award the Nobel Peace Prize for 2018 to Dennis Mukwege and Nadia Murad for their efforts to end the use of sexual violence as a weapon of war and armed conflict. Both laureates have made a crucial contribution to focusing attention on and combating such war crimes. Dennis Mukwege is the helper who has devoted his life to defending these victims. Nadia Murad is the witness who tells of the abuses perpetrated against herself and others, each of them in their own way uh, has helped to give greater visibility to wartime sexual violence so that the perpetrators can be held accountable for their actions. The physician Dennis McVega has spent large parts of his adult life helping victims of sexual violence in the Democratic Republic of Congo. Since the Pansi Hospital was established in Bakavu in 2008, Dr. Mukwege and his staff have treated thousands of patients who have fallen victims to such assaults. Most of the abuses have been committed in the context of a long-lasting civil war that has cost the lives of more than six million Congolese. Dennis Mukwege is the foremost, most unifying symbol, both nationally and internationally, of the struggle to end sexual violence in war and armed conflicts. His basic principle is that justice is everyone's business men and women, officers and soldiers, local, national and international authorities alike, all have a shared responsibility for reporting and combating this type of war crime. The importance of Dennis Mukwege's enduring, dedicated and selfless efforts in this field cannot be overrated. He has repeatedly condemned impunity for mass rape and criticized the Congolese government and other countries for not doing enough to stop the use of sexual violence against women as a strategy and a weapon of war. Nadia Murad is herself a victim of war crimes. She refused to accept the social codes that required women to remain silent and ashamed of the abuses to which they had been subjected. She has shown uncommon courage in recounting her own suffering and speaking up on behalf of other victims. Nadia Murad is a member of the Yazidi minority in northern Iraq, where she lived with her family in the remote village of Kocho. In August 2014, the Islamic State, ISIS, launched a brutal, systematic attack on the villages of the Sinjar region, aimed at exterminating the Yazidi population. In Nadia Murad's village, several hundred people were massacred. The younger women, including underage children, were abducted and held as sex slaves. While the captive of the ISIS, Nadia Murad was repeatedly subjected to rape and other abuses. Her assaulters threatened to execute her if she did not convert to their hateful, inhuman version of Islam. Nadia Murad is just one of an estimated 3,000 Yazidi girls and women 
who were victims of rape and other abuses by the ISIS army. The abuses were systematic and part of a military strategy. Thus, they served as a weapon in the fight against Yazidis and other religious minorities. After a three-month nightmare, Nadia Murad managed to flee. Following her escape, she chose to speak openly about what she had endured. And in 2016, at the age of just 23, she was named the UN's first goodwill ambassador for the dignity of survivors of human trafficking. This year marks a decade since the UN Secretary Council, excuse me, UN Security Council adopted Resolution 1820, which determined that the use of sexual violence as a weapon of war and armed conflict constitutes both a war crime and a threat to international peace and security. This is also set out in the Rome Statutes of 1998, which governs the work of the International Criminal Court. The statute establishes that sexual violence in war and armed conflict is a grave violation of international law. A more peaceful world can only be achieved if women and their fundamental rights and security are recognized and protected in war. This year's Nobel Prize, Peace Prize, is firmly embedded in the criteria spelled out in Alfred Nobel's will. Dennis McVega and Nadia Murad have both put their personal security at risk by courageously combating war crimes and seeking justice for victims. They have thereby promoted the fraternity of nations through the application of principles of international law. Thank you very much. Madam Leader of the Committee, what is the most important message you want to send out to the world by this year's Nobel Peace Prize? We want to send out a message of awareness that women who constitute half of the population in most communities actually are used as a weapon of war and that they need protection and that the perpetrators uh, have to be prosecuted and held responsible for their actions. We believe that this is a fundamental prerequisite for lasting peace to also include uh, the rights and the awareness of women. Madam Chair, um, congratulations. Um, you. You're supposed to give the prize to the ones who have contributed the most to peace in the last year. Why this prize this year? Uh, this year, uh, Nadia Murad has spoken up on abuses against women. It is a, a prize where it, one cannot single out that it is one particular event this year. It has been a continuous development um, in efforts from the United Nations, efforts by brave individuals, and as we stand here in the year of 2018, we see that Dr. Dennis McVeigh and Nadia Murad carry this message in the most efficient way in the previous year. Has the committee in any way indirectly been inspired also by the Me Too movement and uh, sexual assault on women in general? Well, I believe there is that Me Too and war crimes is not quite the same thing. But they do, however, have that in common, that it is important for, um, to see the suffering of women, to see the abuses, and to achieve that, it is also important that women uh, leave the concept of shame and speak up. Have you been in contact with any of the winners and uh, what were their reactions? 
we have tried to contact the winners and we haven't managed to get through on the phone. If they are watching this, my heartfelt congratulations.